welcome to the Travel Wins Podcast. And today, my guest is William McNamara. Billy, how are you today, buddy? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. I always appreciate talking to these overnight success stories. Uh, th- Thirty plus years uh, as as an actor, that's a uh, quite a run. Yeah, not not bad. I have to say, no, that's really good. <laughs> Most people just want to get to to the first stage of where you're at, and thirty plus years later, here you are. Yeah, still making a living at it. That's that's why I've got this beard right now. I started shooting a western uh, before the uh, before the holidays, and I got to go back at the end of January, so I can't shave it off. It's been it's been tough. I was going to say, my, my wife doesn't let me grow it out too much more than what I'm at right now. She's like, no, no. She goes, you look good with it, but no. <laughs> yeah. So, so like where, where are you filming the Western at? Uh, well, we started in Albuquerque, but we moved to um, a new ranch in Oklahoma. Oh, so wow. we'll be back in Oklahoma. Nice. We had a huge problem in Albuquerque because we came in right after the Alec Baldwin event. Uh, yeah. And because they were doing a Western, it was the same location. Oh my God. So um, the police shut the location down. Yeah. So we sat in Albuquerque for like a week or two, uh, not working because we were waiting. And then the production said, hey, we, we can't wait any longer. We're going to, we found another location, location in Oklahoma. That's crazy. So are your external shots going to be, that's going to be interesting. I don't know how much, how much into filming you got, but. Uh, they'll be, it'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It'll be fine. So. 50 plus, you're right around 50 movies, I, I, I counted. 50? Are you around 50 movies? Oh, God, no. Probably probably 150. Okay. Well, I just went, went off the uh, the filmography. So. Oh. Wow. It's, yeah. And then a lot of TV. A lot of TV. Yeah. I was curious, and I'm going to get this out of the way now. You were, you were right in the era of, of Melrose Place and Beverly Hills 90210. About the same age group. I was curious why you never got onto onto either of those shows. Uh, well, that's a good question. I was offered both shows. I was offered everything. I was offered Melrose Place. I was offered anything I wanted at Fox. I, I did a TV movie for Fox uh, called Doing Time on Maple Drive with Jim Carrey. Um, about a, it was like the first big, you know, propagated film about a kid who's gay coming out of the closet. Okay. Lori Lachlan was my fiance, and she discovered that I was uh gay and so she left me at the altar and, uh, yeah and so so that was a and it did really well for fox there's a bunch of emmy nominations not for me unfortunately but everybody else but um but anyway so fox said to me that you know we would uh you, you could do anything you want at this network we would put you on any show you want 90210 yeah. Melrose place whatever you want um i met with darren starks i think he was the creator of yeah. uh, Melrose Place. And so um, at the time, I thought I was going to have like a movie career because I was doing movies. Oh, and you did. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was, it was um, you know, back in those days, it wasn't that as cool to do television. It was acceptable, yeah. but like most movie stars stayed in movies. But what I did say Absolutely. to Fox is I said, if you guys let me do my own show, uh, I'll do a show here. And at first they said, no, oh, I got you. And so, but they came back to me about two weeks later and said, all right, do you have an idea for a show? And I said, no, but the two writers of Stealing Home, the movie I did with Jodie Foster, yeah. um, they're really good. They're from Second City TV and they're good writers. And so they said, all right, we'll bring them in for a pitch. So I brought them in for a pitch and they, we got green lighted into a pilot. Okay. And, uh, and they kept saying that it was going to be picked up. It was going to be picked up. They're going to do it. And then all of a sudden, um, uh, it, it was, uh, something's going off my screen right here. Hold on. All good. Okay. Hold on. There we go. So, so anyway, um, uh, so we did, we did the pilot. It was great. Yeah. It was actually a great show and, um, and, uh, uh, didn't get picked up. Yeah. Uh, so they gave me another development deal. So I was in development hell for like six months. They paid me a lot of money to do the deal, though, which yeah. was fantastic. Um, but they didn't. They decided not to go forward with the new pilot. I gotcha. So, so that just was timing, right? Kind of, 
Yeah, and I, and I knew that if I did Melrose Place or one of those shows, I wouldn't have the chance to do my own thing. I was trying to yeah. jump the jump the line. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, uh, I, I should have probably. And then, you know, it's funny. Uh, I did get offered uh, when I think it was Andrew Shu left Melrose Place. I got offered a lot of money to do Melrose Place. Oh, wow. Take his place. And for whatever reason, I can't remember at the time, but I did turn it down. Uh, probably not a good idea, but wow. I did. I also turned down 21 Jump Street okay. uh, when they replaced Johnny, when Johnny Depp left. Uh, that other guy, I can't remember what his name is, he wouldn't have had a career without me. Uh, uh, DeLuise. No, not Was DeLuise. That? The other guy that took the, the spot. They, they came in. Oh, and, oh yeah. Greco. R Richard Greco. Richard Greco, yeah. Yeah. So they offered me a lot of money for that, and I turned it down. Probably another mistake. No, nah, no. You, you, you can't go through life like that. No, no. I mean, especially in your in that industry, it's it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, how, how uh, to me, it's all timing. It, it seems like it's just everything's timing. Yeah. Yeah, but how, how many different locations have you been on for, for filming? Oh, my God. In the hundreds. I mean, I've yeah. been everywhere in the world. It's 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 uh. That's the one thing that we do is a lot of traveling, a lot of hotels. Yeah. A lot of hotels. I'll yep. be doing that next week in Dallas. So, yeah, I feel oh, you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's the best part about the travel? What's the worst part? Well, the best part, what's great about traveling with the film production yeah. is um, a lot of people that are working on the film when you get there are locals. Sure. And they can tell you. They, they take you places. They tell you where to go. Um yeah. So they have everything's dialed in, you know, and usually what happens is they'll hire a local location person. Sure. That location person knows everything, every restaurant, every store, where to get this vitamin, what you whatever need. you need. Yeah. And you're being paid to be there. So my hotel's paid for, yeah. uh, my, I'm getting per diem every day and you're there for a month. You really get to experience, uh, you know, I was in Albuquerque for all, you know, almost three weeks and, I went to Santa Fe. I got, you know, I got to do yeah. a lot of things and I'm being paid to be there. So I'm getting cash every day. It's pretty awesome. So it's, so for that, it's, it's an amazing, and I've, it's taken me everywhere. I've done a couple of probably three, four movies in Italy. I've done a TV series in Sicily, uh, done a movie in Morocco, in France, in England, um, everywhere. Now, now you're, how long have you been a vegan? Um, I've been a vegan for 21 years. Okay. How much is, is it easier now? Do you find it to be easier now to, to find options, food options? and? Yes, yes and no. Um, okay. Absolutely easier for sure, especially in L.A. Um, oh, yeah. But, uh, and even in Las Vegas, where I'm spending a lot of time, yeah. I just finished just over the... I, when I got the break from the one movie, I did another movie here in Vegas. Oh, wow. Uh, um, an action and adventure film called uh, Mojave Diamonds. And um, uh, there's a lot of vegan restaurants here in yeah. Vegas. So it's been pretty great. The problem is, though, is they've, they figured out how to make vegan food, but it's all chemically altered food. Yeah. The best vegan food in the world. Raw food. Salads and veggies and some tofu once in a while and some nuts and seeds so vegan food is not that hard to find any place everybody has a salad yeah you know I, like i love lentil soup but I, yeah. I i heard an interview of you being in italy and living on lentil for quite a while oh yeah That's... yeah lentil soup is i mean my Right now, the, you know, the, I have like a stock of, <laughs> of lentil soup. Exactly. That and uh, split pea soup are the two things yeah. that, are, that a vegan can pretty much live on. That's pretty crazy, though. When you when you go overseas, you kind of deal with what you get, right? Yeah, that's right. Is it now? Is uh, I know. Is it tougher to be a vegan overseas? Do you think? I don't know. I mean. Well, in Sicily, it was. I mean, yeah. Sicily is like a real different part of Italy. It's not the same. It's very heavy meat. They eat a lot of meat. Um, and basically, just to survive, I had to eat eggs when I was there. 
and everything, you know, so I had like hard boiled eggs in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, but they had a lot of lentil soup, so lentiki. Italians love lentiki, it's called. It's little tiny lentils. So yeah. there's plenty of that in, in Europe. Because I have a couple of uh, friends that, that are musicians and they travel and they're vegans. And it's, it used to be a lot rougher and they used to have to drive many, many miles to find options. Right. So, and that, right. that's the one thing I struggle with as a traveling sales rep, you know, finding good options when you're out on the road. It's yeah. Like, it's so easy to find the crap, the bad stuff. Yep. It's hard to find the good stuff. That's right. So just a matter of commitment, I guess. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, the, uh, you did the one show where you, you tracked, uh, the exotic animals. Yeah. That was a non-scripted show. So yeah. in other words, reality. Yes. I produced that. I created it and I hosted a couple of the episodes. I was curious after, you know, you, you, you put your money behind, behind you, you, you put your money and time into it. And when, did you watch any of the Tiger King series? Uh, that's what? a long story, but yeah, a little bit oh, of it. it? So, okay. Yeah. One of the guys that worked for me when I was developing my show, he broke off and hung out with the Tiger King guy. Oh, right? wow. The guy said, yeah, and started filming his stuff. And that split us apart because the Tiger King is not a good person in the animal yeah. activism world. Yeah. So, but then an old friend of mine uh, that I lived with in New York years ago when I was a struggling artist, uh, his name is Eric Good. He owned a nightclub in New York that I used to work at called uh, Area, uh, what was it called? Area. Okay. And so he was the executive producer, co director of Tiger King. And he had hired that kid oh, that I wow. fired and used his footage and got the idea from that kid who I, because I went and did an undercover investigation on the yeah. Tiger. Um, I started the whole thing. And when Eric called me, he said he was doing a documentary about animal conservation. Could I send him some of my footage? So I sent him all my footage, not knowing it was going to be the Tiger King. Oh, right. But when I saw the Tiger King, I was like, and a bunch of friends called me they said, Billy, congratulations on your new show on Netflix. I'm like, yeah. And they said, Tiger King, what, didn't you get all that footage of that guy? I'm like, yeah. I, had, I didn't even know about it. Oh, man. And I went on and I saw the opening, Eric Good. And I'm like, oh, my he, God. He took your stuff. And then Eric said, he didn't really take it. I mean, I, no, I no, him, yeah. But, but also, he also, his original intent on the documentary was not to glorify the Tiger King. But when Netflix was interested, and his partner, this woman, I can't remember her name, they re-edited the whole thing oh, to glamorize the Tiger King and make Carol Baskin look like a nut. Yeah. That wasn't his original intention. So oh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So that's the that's the deal with Tiger King. So it's well, I think it's, I, th I think it made them all look bad, in my opinion. I mean, it's just yeah. All, but all the people, I mean, they're all. It's, it seemed like from what they showed, I know it's all edited, but it seemed like all the people that are in that industry are a little cuckoo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they made Carol Baskin look bad on purpose. She's I, she's a friend of mine. I've known her for over probably 15 years now. Okay. And she's a pretty stable go-to activist who's rescued a lot of animals and have been involved with shutting down a lot of illegal operations, like the Tiger King. She was going after him because he does, he, he exploits the animals, yeah. and then he kills them when they get too big or they get too old. And they can't, he can't afford to feed them anymore. Yeah. Or the, see what, what, what he's really started. He was really big in is he would go around from town to town and he'd have these little tiger cubs in his car or his van or his employees would go from town and there'd be a, like go to a Walmart park parking lot and they'd say, Hey, you want your kids want to have a picture with the baby tiger? And the kids, mom, mom, baby yeah. tiger. So they go, it's 35 bucks for the picture. You get a hundred people a day. That's 3,500 bucks a day. Yeah. Good. It's a good living cash. Yeah, yeah. Go from not non reported town. cash. Yeah. But the problem is when those tiger cubs at a certain age, it's illegal to exhibit them and let the public touch them because they become dangerous. So that tiger cub is like 50 pounds, 60 pounds. It could kill a child. Yeah. So they're no longer allowed to do that. So what do you do with all these baby tigers and lions? You kill them and throw them in a freezer. Somebody finds out. That's what he was doing. Yeah, isn't that crazy? He's been though? doing it for 20 years. And nobody stopped him. Uh, Carol Baskin went to the USD the Department of Agriculture. They're, that's supposed to be their job, but they don't really have an enforcement wing. So right. like we, we realize it and they would fine him or they would write citations to him. And that's it. 
So Carol Baskin just continued to go after him and others as well. All the animal exploiters hate Carol Baskin. Well, that's the, the one guy that they just came out. I haven't watched it yet. The, the, the Tiger King 2 with the guy back in Pennsylvania or whatever that they showed okay. in the original. And I'm just I'm saying they're all kind of seem yeah. a little, yeah. a little loose. A little loose, yeah. But I, I thought that was cool that, you know, you believed in something. You used your, your fame and, and your connections to yep to build and do something good with it. That was awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a great achievement because it was very hard to do. <laughs> no. Well, do you think it would if if you were to approach it now? Do you think it would be easier now with with what happened with the Tiger King and the press that it got? Yeah, maybe not a bad idea. I'll run it by Allison. She's my rescue oh, partner, yeah, Allison just, Eastwood. Yeah, I mean, it just idea. seems like there's the the more you can, the more uh, info you can put out there in the world about treating animals fair. Because I've seen some weird things in my, my past too. Yeah. So, I bet. Well, well, you know, so, so my, my background is I, I was at the rodeo for two weeks at during the, um, in Vegas, I was just there. So, Oh, so my day job is I work for Stetson. I sell cowboy boots and jeans and shirts and all that throughout California and Hawaii. So, wow. I'm sure you're wearing some, some cowboy boots and stuff in the movie yeah. for your shoot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what, what do you what do you not enjoy about traveling? Um, I don't enjoy most traveling um, like I'm going to go to Mexico in the next day or two. So I'm heading back to L.A. tonight. Um, I don't enjoy leaving my dog somewhere you know, where she's not with me. So, yeah. in fact, that's I when we did the job in Albuquerque, I drove my own car and brought my dog with me. Sure. And so I don't enjoy leaving the dog behind. I don't I don't like that. Is it been difficult uh, keeping in touch with with your friends and family all the times you've missed? Yes. I mean, yeah. how, how do you make up for that? I'm just curious. Um, I I don't know how to. I, I'm not sure. I don't think I do make up for it. I don't know. I, don't, <laughs> I probably don't do enough. I guess. Well, no. I mean, like, I mean, I've missed my daughter. My daughter's birthday runs during the rodeo. It's in December. Okay. So I miss, I missed it for almost 11 years. Oh, wow. So, you know, so when I come home, she knows I'm going to be gone. When I come yeah. home, yeah. we'll go out, we'll do things. Right. Well, I guess when I come home, I take my dog on a special walk. <laughs> take him over to Leo Carrillo and go off the beach, huh? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. What, what, as, as far as foods, what, what's been the best place for foods that you've traveled to? For food? Yeah. I mean, you know, just very fattening, but Italy is amazing. You know, I mean, Italy's got just amazing, easy food that's like quick and simple and delicious, you know. Um, it's just amazing how they make food in, in Italy. And even the little shops and stuff, it's just it's the everywhere. food is so fresh. And I mean, they're really into their food there. Um, it's the, the, even the salads taste for some reason. The, the greens are have a greater taste in, in Italy than they do here. I think, I don't think they, they don't do as much factory farming. I think so, that's it because my, my niece lives it. in, she lives in Paris and she's lived there for like nine years, eight years, nine years. And she says the same thing. She goes, the food just tastes, it's health. It's just healthier. She yep. goes, I, there's just less processed food. She finds. Yep. That's right. She goes, I eat, I eat more than I ate in the States, but she's a dancer. So she has to keep her, her weight down. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's So uh, you're the second person that said that. Yeah. That's so Italy, Italy's the best. And, and France, what, you know, France is great as well, except, um, the Fran the French food can be very heavy and it seems that they, they spend a lot of time in, in the kitchen making it. So I, okay. I like, and I noticed in Italy, somebody will say, Hey, come over to the house for dinner. And we're well, sitting there and there's no, I don't see anything around say, Oh, we're going to have dinner. Like, Oh yeah. And they go, they make it and, 12 minutes pops out. Delicious. amazing salad amazing lentil soup and then an amazing pasta and it's like wow it's so good yeah, it's so done. Quick. yeah. that's awesome yeah you know, what place would you like to uh, travel to or, um, you know for for movies you know to shoot something like australia new zealand bangkok far um, east yeah i would love to go to like thailand for sure just for the just for the beaches there yeah um also, 
uh, I'd like to go back to Ecuador. Okay. I, I did film a, so part of my, uh, when I did the sizzle reel or the, or the pilot for the show that I did with Allison, the rescue show, I went to Ecuador and I did a, a, a bear rescue there, but I also spent time in the Galapagos on a boat. Oh, sweet. And so I filmed all of that. So that was amazing. I'd love to go back there one more time, spend more time there. Cause I was only in each place for like two days, two days. Yeah. In the mountains did the bear rescue with a helicopter, two days in Galapagos and one or two days in the jungle. So I'd like to go back there or, or really anywhere in, in South America. Okay. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. I've been so many places. It's hard to well, say. I know. I was going to say, you know, when, when you were studying, you're, you're one of the few people that I met that, that have made a career out of something they studied in college. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of rare. Like some, you know, a lot of people take business and then they end up doing whatever. Right. Like, I mean, you, you wanted to be an actor and you know, 35 plus years later, you're still doing it. Right. Why do you think that is? Did you just have the guts to stay in it and, and get through it? Yeah. Or? I think it's, I'm persistent and, uh, and motivated and driven and, you know, you get addicted to the life of get the, tra the free travel all over the world. And, and, uh, uh, you know, and it's fun to be on set because you get to be really creative too. Yeah. So that's been, that's been a lot of fun. Um, it just, it's so enjoyable. It's almost like not working. You're getting paid to have fun. It's bizarre. Yeah. No, I, I, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I, we have some similar traits because I saw an interview when you were talking about being a producer and you'd never do it again. Yeah. I was like, man, I've been there, you know, where I've managed people and I'm like, God, I want to go back and just sell. I just want to. Yeah. Was that kind of it? Was it just. Well, I mean, this la this project that I did, it's been like seven years. It's been really tough. Um, spent a lot of my own money, had to raise some money, did some a Kickstarter, which was successful, yeah. uh, but very, uh, very difficult and time consuming. And, you know, for, for my whole career, I always played 10, 15 years younger. That movie that I did, it's called The Trouble with Billy. Yeah. That movie aged me, put me right back. I lost 15 <laughs> years. I'm not kidding. Yeah, the stress yeah. has been unbelievable. And, you yeah. know, running out of money a few times and, you know, having to do it piecemeal, put the whole thing together piecemeal. Um, and I was doing everything. I yeah. wrote it. I directed it. I starred in it. I cast it. I produced it. I financed it. I did everything. So it was just like I did location scouts by myself. I did everything. That's crazy. So it was, uh, you know, but it's turned out pretty good. I'll, I'll send you the trailer when we're done. It's funny. No, I've watched it a couple of times. Oh, it's, the new trailer? It's about seven minutes long, 720. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's an old, old oh, trailer. Okay. The new trailer, the commercial trailer for the, for the, is great. It's only two minutes and it's oh, okay. really good. Yeah. I mean, they're, it, it's kind of weird in the sense of like, I'm, I'm watching it. I'm going, well, that's kind of like, obviously, yeah, I, I like how you say it's loosely based on your life. Right. Then, so I'm, now I'm trying to figure out what part's loose and what's not, you know. Well. A lot of comedy. It's funny as so. hell. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of stuff that's not true. I've never lived in a car. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, for many years, I have, a, I have a Kia now, brand new Kia. But for the last 10 years, I've never, that Monte Carlo I bought uh, for like 500 bucks to use as, a, as the set piece. Yeah. Because uh, I always have been driving a Prius for the last 10 years. Until now, I switched to a Kia. Probably will go back to a Prius. But. But um, uh, I've never been abducted by aliens, thank God. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I have seen, had some very close encounters with some very strange objects. Okay. Very close and, and not of this, maybe of this world. My final decision on it after the experiences that I had is that it's probably government. Yeah. It's probably military stuff that they were testing. That's what I think it was. It was out of this world, but it was still yeah. ours. I I had one experience when I was a kid in Arizona where I saw something fly at night, stop. I was at, it was the middle of a football practice. I looked over to, to the play. I looked back up and it was gone. And it was like no, nothing around. And you're like, yep. And this is, that's in the 70s. So I'm not talking drones. I mean, but it acted like a drone. Wow. But yeah. you know, that was in 77, 
76. Yep. So that's a trip. Yep. So, but, you know, th- did you enjoy the, 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 I, I, I know it was tough, but you, ha- you had a lot of great scenes in there in the, in the trailer, at least. Yeah. You know, with, with Billy Baldwin and, and the camper and you yep. had some good, really fun parts. Yeah. It turned out really, it turned out really well. Um, the hardest thing about that was cutting out a lot of stuff. So yeah. I cut out 30% of the, the movie that I shot yeah. and it was very painful because uh, there's a lot of scenes that I really, really loved and, but people didn't like them. Some minority liked them and majority disliked them. Right. So, you know, I had to, I finally, you know, had to cut stuff out, which was, that was the hardest thing for me was cutting out some of my favorite scene, the opening of the movie is a scene where uh, we're all at an AAA meeting. So yeah. not AA, but AAA, A. Yeah. which is Alien Abductees Anonymous. Yeah. So we've all been abducted. So it just wasn't shot well. And and some pe- a lot of people were turned off by it so much. They're like, well, I can't finish watching the movie because I hated the beginning so much. I'm like, wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's what caused me to, to, to finally say, okay, cut it out. It looked and I reshot enough. it. I reshot the scene to make it better. You know, didn't help. Didn't help. That's crazy, though. It's it and it, yeah. It was my. It was and it was the reason why he gets kicked out of the house. You kind of miss that now. Uh, I wonder. I don't know. Yeah. Is there another? Is the movie now available? No, I've just okay. what I've done is I finished the movie and now um, I did a. I hired a professional movie house to cut a real movie trailer. And then I also had to do a poster, which I'll send you. Um, so now I have a, I hired a consultant. He'll go out and start pitching the trailer and the poster and see if we get bites on it. And then he'll, they'll say, well, send us the movie. So I just did that. So I'm That's hoping cool. that the new year now we'll start seeing some results. Maybe. Well, there's a lot. Well, and I don't it seems like there's a lot more options now than 10 years ago. I mean, just the streaming services alone. Yes and no. Um, And the other issue is, you know, my original idea for this was a TV series. So really the movie is the first five episodes. So I had to make a beginning, middle and end out of it to make it a movie, which is not easy to do. Uh, But my final goal, if it streams well, then I'll have the ammunition to go to the platforms and say, Hey, look, this streamed well. Here's, I have 30 more episodes written. Maybe they'll, somebody will take a chance on it. Maybe, who knows? That's kind of, do you ever think about the YouTube? Because I think of Cobra Kai, you know, I mean, that. The yeah, guy but getting on YouTube, on YouTube Red, which is now gone, YouTube oh, Red is folded. Right. I think Cobra Kai went to Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it did. So but getting, see, on the YouTube. problem with a lot of these platforms, I'm just going to get my cacao drink here. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's all good. Um, a lot of these platforms, um, you know, they're trying to become Netflix or HBO overnight. Yeah. So what they'll say to you is, uh, you know, even if my show is so funny and I've had one guy who's ahead of a major platform, he watched the old trailer and he laughed out loud and he said, oh, I, yeah. you know, I know. So, but, you know, that we, we want A++ actors and A++ showrunners. If you don't have that, we won't even talk to you. No, your show could be the best show ever. But all the platforms want the same thing. They all want to be Netflix and HBO. So they're yeah. going for, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow and Meryl Streep. Yeah. That's the show they want to do. And they'll spend $100 million on it. Because I, I, I'm go- going back to what you said earlier is I remember when West Wing came out and Martin Sheen was going to be the lead on that. And it was a big deal because he was a movie actor. And- yeah. So That's when right. you said that to me, I was like, oh, it makes, because I remember it was a big deal. Movie actors d- didn't do it and TV actors didn't do movies. and Right. But now it seems like it's just interchangeable. It's interchangeable. Yeah. And in fact, for me today, I would prefer to be on a TV series if I could get on one. That would be, forget movies. Why We're is done. that? Um, I just think that most of the movies coming out now, unless it's a Marvel movie, yeah, but most movies aren't even going to theaters anymore. I know, and and even if they do go, West Side Story apparently didn't do well their numbers, and it was released in theaters. It's a big movie. Spielberg's involved, and it's supposed to be great. So, I think unless you're a tentpole movie, DC Comics or Marvel, yeah. I just don't think you have, 
people aren't seeing them and they'll they'll eventually see them but on netflix so it's television i was gonna say you know just as a consumer it, if i see a, like like for me i'd want to go see top gun 2 in the theaters yeah because of the too. sound the, the, of the visual i mean that, that kind of movie yes but any I, most of them i'm trying to think a lot of the the stories movies i think i go i'd wait a month and just watch it streaming that's right you know that's right yeah. so i agree with you i mean i think i think the movie industry is going to be it's gonna be interesting <laughs> that's a good word for yeah. it yeah and it's the not other thing go is away. the other thing is television right now there's so many great writers and great shows and great actors in television i mean it's better than movies yeah. these are these great tv shows and foreign I mean, you know, well made net- TV shows now too. What? Well made, well fun. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Extremely yeah. well made, so well written. All these. I mean, there's so many. I can't even begin to start telling you all the shows. I think yeah. are phenomenal. And what's great is because of Netflix, we have shows from now TV shows from Norway, from uh, you know, from Italy. Um, what was that great show? Better than Godfather, the movie. It was um, Gamora. It's an Italian uh, show about petty criminal, about organized crime, okay. but not the big bosses. It's like organized crime on mopeds in, in like Sicily. Brilliant. Gamora. There's another show from Spain, I believe. Uh, it's called Elite. Have you heard of that? No. No. It's on Netflix, as is Gamora. Okay. Um, uh, so Elite is about a, an elite boarding uh, prep school in Spain. And they have these the scholarship kids there. So it's kind of between the rich and the poor. It, it, it's an amazing show. It's, it's incredible. The show yeah. better than anything in the United States. So Netflix now has introduced me to all this great I mean, yeah. TV is yeah. where it's at. No, I agree. You know, cause we have, we have uh, the Roku, we have Roku channel, we have uh, Hulu and Amazon prime. Those are kind of our main ones. Right. You know, but I think I would wait unless it was, like I said, unless it was a big action movie, I think I would wait and just watch it on of TV. Of course. I agree. Yep. You know, it, it kind of become the, the blockbuster. I'm, you know, blockbuster usually four ninety nine, and now you know, Amazon Prime's two ninety nine or three ninety nine, and people are like, oh, I'm like, oh, man, it used to be more, trust me. Yeah. Yeah. And you had to return it with late, without late fees. Right. That's right. So, how, how interesting is it for you to, I mean, God, you were in the 80s, so you're talking pre-computers just about. Yeah. You know, to, to see how much technology has changed what you do, even as an actor, what you do. Is it? Um, do you ever think back? And... Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, I was the first actor ever to, I built a website, williammcnamara.com. It's been gone for years. But this was in the 80s. And on that website... Uh, there was a small company called like Real Media. It was a little down that you could download. R E E L Real okay. Media, and it was a it was a player. It was the first player That's that you crazy. could play. So, so I had all my clips from all my movies and TV shows on this website, and it was kind of like and I had all the updates and everything. So I was doing this, and I had a manager, a very big manager at the time, a very successful manager slash producer in Hollywood. Um, and I said to him, I said, Craig, you know, I have this incredible thing on my website. You could just send, send it out. My demo reel. Yeah. Instead of sending it on a VHS tape. Yeah, yeah. Later on, it was a CD. I said, you could say, no, nobody will ever look at your stuff online, Billy. It's just, that's crazy. It'll never, you're wasting your time. Now it's the exact opposite. Yep. Yep. Now, now you got people that are literally building their, their, not television because it's not on TV. Oh, it's on television, I guess. You know the, the YouTube channels and some some of the big shows. Yeah. I mean, even some of the shows that have been created out of podcasts. That's right. You know. So. That's right. Yeah, it's amazing. So I was doing that in the eighties. Yeah. What made you do that? Was it somebody that talked to you and do it, or or a friend, or? Well, I found a guy who was a fan who wanted to do a website for me. I said, sure. Oh, okay. And and then I asked him is there any way to put videos up? He said, yes, there's this thing we could use. Yeah. And so we did, and he put them up there. You know, the problem was, you know, they didn't play very well. That was an issue because yeah. the internet was not fast back then. So it would kind of stagger. So there were a lot of issues. 
it was the right idea, the wrong time. Yeah. Well, it goes back to timing, right? Right. So I, I always say, you know, you're right. I, I'm trying to imagine some of the videos that it, my, even my kids don't remember dial up, you know, dial, dial yep. up speeds were, whew, yep. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah, I, I remember my dad's Macintosh was a Mac SE 20. It was a 20 megabyte hard drive. Total. Wow. I'm like, I go, my, the pictures I take are, are bigger than that. That's right. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 And it's just in our lifetime. Are you excited about the future of, of what, what you're doing in acting and, and what's coming up? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I, I'm pretty excited. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's, you know, I, I'm going to be more excited once I sell my, once I get my uh -huh. movie done, it's so close right now. Um, you know, the one last major stage, which will be the legal paperwork, which will take, which will be a pain in the butt. Yeah. Um, but once it's all done and it's on this platforms, I'm free. I'm free of this thing. It's been on, it's been a sort of a thing around my neck. Oh, albatross. Yeah. An albatross. It's always I, there, right? Yeah. For years. And I have some people that gave me money that want their money back. I don't blame them. So yeah. I get a lot of heat from, from people. It's like, Hey, what's going on? And it's, it's, it's the ultimate hurry up and wait, right? Yep. I mean, that's, that's right. kind of what it is. That's right. So I'll be excited once it's over and who knows, it could do well, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to give up on the series idea. I'm going to, you know, follow, follow through on that. And, uh, uh, yeah. Have you watched any of the Cobra Kai? When it first was on, I was watching it all the time. It's a great show. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Cause it was interesting how it, it we were just, my wife and I just started watching it again last night with the season four that just came out. But like, you know, Zapka is the one that got that. From my understanding, Billy he got Zapka. that. He got that going up again, right? He did. I mean, I mean that's kind of, it's kind of crazy to think that he was in the first movie. I don't yep. think he was in the second one or the third one. But you know, a guy, a, a good actor, just yep. decided to put it, and, and you know, he he did it right. Yeah, he did it right. And you know, the thing about Cobra Kai. You know, it, it's from it's a little bit easier to sell the idea than mine because it's from an iconic movie. I mean, everybody knows yeah. Karate Kid. I mean, it's it's you know, it's, it's it's like in our part of our history, film history. It's a great movie, and yeah. it did well. And so they had that sort of branding. You know, that's another thing they look for. If you have branding, you know, if this was based on something else, I might have a better shot in getting a series. Uh, it's but I don't know. I think if it's, it's, it's good, you got a lot of good, funny parts and, and maybe it's cause I've lived in LA for a while. So, yeah. Some of it's really funny. Like yeah. when you met with your agent, I was like, Oh man. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, My old agent. Yeah. yeah. He says, where have you been outer space? Sort of. Oh yeah. Abducted by aliens. Oh, he goes, Oh, okay. Exactly. <laughs> so I gotta go. <laughs> and that he was a good character actor too. I don't remember his name, but. Randall Battenkoff, he's fantastic. Yeah, I've seen him on a lot of stuff. He, he's the best thing in the movie, and he's uh, he just watched it. By the way, he, he just a couple of days ago he called me. He said his sister was in town. He lives in Santa Monica. Sister was in town, so they they him and his wife and his sister, they watched the movie, the new the the final. It's only eighty minutes long. I cut okay. so much out. Um, but uh, he, he he loved it. He was shocked how good it was. He did he did not have any expectation because he. You know, he knew it was a ragtag. Yeah, putting together seventy thousand dollar movie. That's crazy, though. You know the um, well, Bill, 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 Billy Baldwin's part were, were funny too. I mean, oh my God, Baldwin, gotta, he's amazing in the scene. Yeah, you got a he's lot of amazing. good stuff going on. I can't wait to see the the whole production. I was looking last night. I was on on Yahoo and and um, uh, or Amazon try, trying to find it. So it ain't out yet. Hopefully, it, you know. It's coming It'll be soon. What, what what do you need to make that happen? You just oh you, you got the movie poster and all that coming up. Well, so, yeah, I just it, what uh, those are just the, the sale houses. tools to the distributors. Yeah. So I'd like to get some kind of commitment from a distributor. Um, you know, unfortunately, the the bad news today is that because filmmaking has become very easy, anybody can make a film now. You buy a camera off of Amazon for eighteen hundred bucks, yeah. and you can make a movie. It's not that hard. Um, so. In the old days, if I had this movie, the 80s or the 90s, 
I could probably sell it for a million dollars. But today, because there's like 5,000 movies a month coming out, yeah. they, they're not, they don't pay for movies anymore because they have just, it's just too much content. They get, it's like the most independent films will do the deal with the distributor. The distributor says, okay, I'm going to buy your movie. Oh, fantastic. How much am I going to get? Oh, no, no, no. We don't give any money up front. We give it back. Yeah. In fact, we have to do some marketing, which is going to cost a lot of money. So we'll take your movie and you give us (laughs) $40,000. That's pretty not awesome. That's how it works. Yeah. Um, Unless you're in a major, you know, a a lot with a very, maybe one, you know, trending star right now could be, could be different. Or if you do well at some of the big film festivals. And I just decided not to waste my time submitting to film festivals because it's just, it's, I just, it, it wasn't interesting to me. Okay. That's pretty interesting though, that because that's something you had to, well, I would imagine you had to think about because that would be a way to get distribution. Yeah. Yeah. So. But again, they, they're getting like five to 8,000 submissions, these yeah. film festivals. And right now it's a, sort of a very, the environment is, you know, a very good friend of mine, I can't say who, but a good friend of mine uh, is a very, pretty successful writer, um, very involved in the politics of the WGA, which is the Writers Guild. Yeah. And he's also, um, he writes reviews for a major newspaper. He writes the video reviews, not the main movie reviews, but like all the videos that come out, you know, which is a lot. Yeah. And he's a good friend of mine. And he actually helped me in the beginning with this, with the trouble um with some writing stuff and so he watched the movie i sent it to him and he said i'm very happy billy great good job i said well if you were going to review this and you didn't know me right what would you have to say so okay if i didn't know you i would say that your movie is uh not compatible with the environment today um you don't have any uh, black or Hispanic people in your movie, and <laughs> and so that is so crazy. I would ha- I would po- I would say your movie all in all is an entertaining movie, fun to watch, easy yeah. to watch. But I'd also say, however, you know, if you're if you know, it's not it's not mainstream in that it's just right now it's not doing what Hollywood wants to be done, which right. is to have. And I started doing it seven years ago before this whole thing happened before all of a sudden, you know, everything is, if it's, but I said to him, I said to him, I said, now, but wait a minute, what about the transgender girl? And he goes, Oh, what transgender girl? I said, Claudia. And he goes, Oh, she's transgender. I said, yes. And I said, but I don't beat you over the head with it because I don't want to go, Hey, I've got a transgender in my movie. I don't do that. She's a woman. As far as I'm concerned, she's a woman. Yeah. As far as she's concerned, she's a woman. She's not transgender. She's a woman. She's a woman. So that's how I pitched her as a woman. But I said, you know, the techni- technically, she is. She used to be a man. Isn't it? Isn't it crazy that you that you're trying? In my opinion, that's all it is, anyways. But you're trying to do the right thing by giving her her autonomy, and and say, and not making a big deal out of this transgender. Right. You're doing the right thing, right? By normalizing it, right? But now you're being told you should pimp it out, or you know, right? And that's what he said. He said, "Wow, Billy, we, we need to have, let people know. You need to let people know that because otherwise, you come off as not, you know, not complying with what's going on right now." Um, like you know, because I, I started seven years ago, you know, it's so. <laughs> but yeah, I, I still think even today, you, it's you're still doing the right thing just by by normalizing it. That's right. That's right. I mean, just yeah. like why why might might make a big deal if there's no no people of color in it? If there are, right. then there are. And, I don't and know. it has a subtle, not a subtle, but it has a, a, a solid animal message. And that's yeah. the one thing that I've I've noticed in all this uprising in America and the rest of the world is where are the animal rights activists? Yeah. How come we're still going to jail? How come we're not getting the bail reform? How come we're not? We're, we're fighting. We've been fighting for animals for 20, 25 years. Sometimes we have to do some Ill- illegal stuff, you know, break in or rescue or whatever it is. Um, but nobody's 
in the streets, you know, and animal abuse in America and the rest of the world is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, we're not allowed to say China's a bad country, but they do a lot of bad stuff. I mean, if you just look at, if you look at, you know, look at South yeah. American countries and look at the biggest problem that South American countries have. And you'll, if you start reading alternative news, you'll see. And I'm like, what, what's going on is China has fleets of these massive fishing fleets, massive. And they're constantly around South America encroaching into international waters and like Ecuador or Peru, all these countries, they don't have the resources to send to Navia. So right. they're just pillaging all South America. And I imagine it's happening in other places too. I mean, you see an armada of 800 ships show up and you're, and there's fishermen in their little ship trying to catch yeah. some tuna. You and know, bring back they're the netting salt. them. Yeah. They're netting, you know, everything. So it's weird that nobody's talking about that. They're talking about climate change and stuff like that, but they're leaving out the real ecosystem disaster. I met the president. I, I, I'm going to be, I still, he still might be a guest on the show, but I, I, I took an air flight with this guy and he's part of a, uh, an animal activist, a, a well-known group uh, on TV a couple of years ago, with a, a good show. I think it was on discovery channel or history channel. And, um, I just happened to sit, he sat down next to me and I saw his t-shirt and we started talking and I'm like, Oh, you're the president. Oh. And, uh, but I was told that he wouldn't, he couldn't go on the show right now because they're worried about the negative press of their carbon footprint. I'm just like, hold on. I'm trying to get the word out. And now everyone's the cancel culture thing is real. I mean, yeah. everyone's worried about it. And so in my movie, I've got this rescue pit bull who's Boo. really, star of the movie you know she's boo right yeah she's the you know she she's the whole reason debt yeah. or the reason for existing and the whole movie is about trying to get her a new heart get raise the money to get the, yeah. to get the transplant so she survives and she's a pit bull which is you know a very maligned yeah. animal and a rescue dog so that's the other you know, my underlying real message is the love for the dog so, but that activism doesn't count. That right. animal activism doesn't count. You have to be a different kind of activist. Oh, well, or not? <laughs> yeah, or not. And just do, do. I mean, you're you're making positive changes in the world. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's kind of the bottom line. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, the more the better. But yep. You know, that's how I feel about my podcast. It's like I'm, you know, trying to get people out there, and you know, there there are a million podcasts. Oh. yeah so it wow. is what it is it is what it is yeah you know so one last thing i wanted to ask you is when you're traveling how do you kill the time if you're taking a flight to italy are you studying are you reading are you z z zoning out um well like when i'm flying like i'm just preparing now because i'm flying to mexico yeah um i'm getting all my portable batteries ready so i could be on my 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 laptop and my phone and i have a lot of audio books so i okay. listen to tons of audio books and um uh that's the best way for me to fly is just listen you know i could finish a whole book in one flight which is great are you um, are you a fiction or non-fiction or does it just a non-fiction okay non-fiction a lot of health stuff um uh yeah mostly mostly non-fiction yeah have you always been that way? Um, I, I just find that I, once I got into my fifties, now I'm doing yeah. the same thing. I'm, I'm reading about fitness and, and meals and, and I want to keep my body going. Right. Exactly. In my thirties, I was like, ah, whatever. Right. No. Yeah. It's, it's the health and the fitness stuff now in the fifties. So now I'm much more interested in it. Exactly. How to turn back the clock. Well, yeah. Do you ever think if you could go back 30 30 years and know what you know now about what, how the body, anyways, the refined carbs yeah. and the sugars and yep, how that yep. affects your body. I mean, we yep. were all lied to, but that's a, lied that's a whole, to. That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. So audiobooks is a great okay. way. And then usually, whenever I get to a location, unfortunately, I'm so busy, and I want I want to try to get my you know usually unless it's overseas I bring a blender with me so I try to find the markets that have organic stuff so I'm always it's it's like I never get to settle down yeah um, 
and always preparing for the next day at work, which is, you know, memorize 10 pages of lines. So it's, it's, it's not easy, the, the travel and the work, because you're expected to do a lot. How do you, how do you memorize that much text in one day? It's just, it's, it's just a, it's just a habit. I've been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. And I started out in theater. So in theater, you, you, you know, sometimes you're, yeah, 9,500 pages on stage. So it's, it's not that hard, but it is, it does, it is time consuming. It's a learned process, right? I mean, yeah. Cause that's, I look at it and go like, I mean, there are songs from the eighties. I remember I can sing them back to you, but yeah. New songs I don't because I don't listen to them as intently, so I don't know if that's just me or, right, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, what's the best way for my my listeners to follow up and see what you have coming up and and make sure to, um, get the trouble well, word out. I I think my uh, either Twitter, which is just William McNamara, I think, uh, my Instagram, which is I think William McNamara one oh eight or I can't remember what it is, my Facebook is facebook.com the trouble with billy okay the movie yeah it's got its own facebook page so i've got updates on that and i get email i get a lot of messages on my facebook trouble with billy page um i guess those are the best ways okay well i'm stoked i'll, I'll make sure to put on my website and include all the links on on oh, the, cool. the press for the episode but yeah i'm stoked to see the movie yeah it's it's, it's good it's not bad that's it's good, not bad. <laughs> yeah. So, well, it's as good as it can be. It's 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 very low budget. I mean, you make a movie for fifty grand. Yeah. Uh, you you can't have you you know you you can't have the big locations. Just things you just can't have. But I was gonna say uh, how much uh, of the. Uh, I mean, it's all it's 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 kind of like a, it's a scripted reality, right? Oh, it's kind of shot. Not, it, well. No, not really. No, okay. it's, 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 um, I will say that I've had a few people see some of the scenes and they thought it was reality. They're like, sure. Oh my God, when the dog was having a seizure in the car, Oh my God, how were you filming your dog when she was having a seizure? Yeah. I'm like, well, cause they thought it was real. And I said, no, that that's not real. That's I was shaking my dog off, off frame. You couldn't see me, but I was shaking her and filming. It. So some people think it is reality. You're right. Yeah. It's very, yeah, maybe it, I would call it surreality. Surreality. There you go. Yeah, I would too. It, like I said, it, it, I'm watching it and I'm like, because they, they use, you use your own name and I'm like, yep. you know, and then you're using friends that are actors that are well known. Right. Like, but they all have separate names, like Billy Baldwin's name in the movie and TV series is Joey Mangiapane. And my <laughs> name is Billy Mack, M-A-C-K. So it's not McNamara, it's Billy yeah. Mack. Yeah. And so um, so I changed it a little bit, but I wanted to kind of blur the line. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So do you, do you, have an, do you think that'll be out by summertime, fall? Oh, yes. Any, okay. Oh, in the next three months. Oh, perfect. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Well, then it's, I'll definitely keep in, keep, uh, in touch Yep, through social, and then I'll I'll repost our episode because that this episode will go out next week. But okay, yeah, uh, absolutely. When the That'd movie gets out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> appreciate well, I appreciate the time, man, and uh, yeah, good to meet you. Best wishes on the all the sh shoots that you have coming up, going to Oklahoma and Mexico. Thank you. You're gonna be traveling, so yeah, doing some traveling. Get out there and keep up with it. Yeah. So thanks again. I appreciate the time, Billy. Yep, absolutely. All right. Thanks, bud. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.